Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Cardboard for Mars. My name is Nate and with me as always is my good friend Nima. What's up guys? Uh, today we are going to be continuing with our card evaluation series. Uh, we hope you guys are digging it. We're having a good time doing it. Um, and just to uh, just to kind of go over the grading scale, we're going to be assigning grades to these cards. Nima, do you want to go over that? Sure. So, well, we like going over these every video just in case you didn't hear it from a previous video. So, we rank them A through F, like school. Uh, letter grade A are we call the game breaking cards, cards you should really not pass on basically any occasion, even if you don't want to use them. Uh, something like this might be AI Central. Uh, letter grade B, uh, these are cards you usually want to play. They're quite a bit better than a standard project, but maybe not absolute must plays. I don't know, we may maybe say like Cupola City might be a B. Um, letter grade C, these are, you sometimes play these, you sometimes don't. You can go back and forth on them. They're a little bit better than a standard project. They're certainly not going to change the game that much. Um, I don't know, what would you call a C, Nate? I can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, a C, I don't know, we've, we've had a few of those. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Carbonate <laughs> processing, maybe, exactly. like something like uh, that. Okay, that's, yeah, it's good content. Um, <laughs> letter grade D, these, uh, these cards you really don't want to play very much. There's, it's hard to get them out, and they're typically highly situational. Uh, some of the the by uh, the microbe cards fall into this situ this category. Some of the plant cards as well. Yeah. And then letter grade F. These are the worst cards in the game. You basically never want to play them um, f under any circumstances, except for possibly really sort of like situational things. And the card I like to rag on the best here is Black Polar Dust. <laughs> I do totally agree. With so. You that one. <laughs> All right, man, uh, why don't you take us away with our first card? Yeah, today. so first card here, um, Decomposers. And um, this card costs five credits, mega credits, and it has a, um, a global requirement restriction of 3% oxygen, so you have to have some oxygen before you can play this. It has a microbe tag, and basically what this says is anytime you play a plant, animal, or microbe tag card, you put a microbe token onto decomposers and then at the end of the game you get a point for every three microbes that are on the card yeah. so what do you think man what do you think about decomposers oof um i'm trying to be fair to this card right now <laughs> like I, I my you know my gut reaction here is this card sucks um and I think I'm still going to be sticking with that. <laughs> um, Go with your there's... gut. Go with your gut, Nima. Yeah, I mean, this there's this is a highly situational card. Like it's it's cheap, but it it, it could be okay. Like I'd, I I could see you getting like two points out of this, depending on what strategy you're going at. Um, the it's just like the having. A point for three microbes on this is kind of what makes it kind of crappy in my eyes. Um, so what do you think? Well, we've talked about. I, I agree with you on the on the point ratio here. You and I have talked about that on some of our other strategy videos. That essentially most of the micro cards are pretty conservative in the points that they deliver. You know, a one to three ratio. Just it's not that strong. But I actually think Decomposers is, is better than than you do. Um, and we all know that I'm right. So, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, here, here's my thoughts on Decomposers. Number one, um, it does give you a cheap microbe tag. And there are a few situations where having a micro tag can, can be good. So, for example, there's Advanced Ecosystems. That's that card that, that gives you three points for 11 credits, but you need to have one of the plant, microbe, and animal tag. Mm -hmm. um, that can activate this, uh, or, you know, Decomposers can help you get there on the microbes. Most of the microbe cards are pretty bad. Um, it's also good to have a, a, an option to score points off of microbes because there are several other cards that generate microbes that let you put them on another card. So yeah. um, late in the game, you might want to play, 
you know, one of these convoy cards or something like that, or, you know, one of the ocean tile cards that lets you put some microbes down. This gives you a spot to dump those microbes. And it's just like a free point because you're, you're going to play those cards anyway, because they're usually pretty good. So I like that. Um, this combos well with viral enhancers. Yeah. And, um, this card, I mean, if you go down the route where you're playing a lot of these plant, animal, and microbe tags, which which often happens if you have viral enhancers, uh, you can score a lot of points on this card. I mean, you, you can score three or four points off it. So obviously that's that's not its average case scenario. I think what you said where you score one to two points is much more likely to be the average case scenario. Mm -hmm. But I think there are times when this card it really behaves more like a combo card and it can, it can take off. I, yeah, I think that's a good point. There are, there are definitely cards that go with this. Uh, symbiotic fungus comes to mind. Yeah. It allows, lets you add a, add a microbe to any card. Yep. I forgot so, about that. I mean, that card goes great with this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, I like also the point you made about, uh, getting this card, getting you into advanced ecosystems. This is a really good way to do that. Um, this is one of the, one of the better cards to get you in there because it's cheap and it, you can possibly get a point or two out of it. Yeah, uh, one one thing that's worth mentioning is there there you know ants can be really annoying when you have these sorts of cards because sure. um, you you end up putting a bunch of of microbes onto this card and then um, uh, you can't take them off. So so like some of the other card the microbe cards allow you to put a couple microbes on and then spend the microbes to raise a TR parameter. That right. can sort of defend you against ants. Um, whereas decomposers is not like that. Like, tardigrade is the same thing. If you throw a few things on here, you're just like they're just going to be taking stuff from you with ants for the rest of the game. It's very annoying. That's true, but I mean, I think Ants is probably one of the least taken cards in the game, right? That's true. I mean, I almost never play that. Um, I also never play that card, but but some people do, and it, it can be, you know, when you're playing a tight game, like these sorts of little corner cases do make a difference. Sure. Okay, so like, th this is maybe a little better than it looks like on its surface, but I still think it's pretty dang situational. I'm giving it a uh, C. Um, I'm not. See. I'm not sure what your thoughts are. I, I think I'm going D plus. D plus. You're just gonna give it the solid D right from the start, man. No, it's the D plus, man. Um, Isn't that the solid D? <laughs> no, solid D would just be D. Um, <laughs> like, hey, K Highlander. Hey, bag dude. Glad you can make it. Um. Yeah, I mean, like, you definitely made me think this is a better card than usual than I might have otherwise. I don't know. I just don't know if I can give it a C minus. I like it's. I gave it a C. I, I even gave it a little better than a C minus. Yeah, well, yeah, that's. I mean, that's surprising, man. You're just saying so. It's sometimes played, but replaceable, marginally better than a standard project. I, maybe, maybe. Um, I, I, I just think it's too situational, so I'm gonna stick with my D plus. Dude, you just stick with that solid D, man. That's your that's your <laughs> you that's just, your best. You just want to keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one, uh, Nima. Let's see what you feel about deep well heating. Okay, this card costs thirteen. There's a power tag and a building tag. It uh, gives you a energy production and increases the temperature one step. Yeah, I like deep well heating. I think this card's, uh, you get a lot with this. It's a nice little package. You know, you get, um, the tags are good. You get an energy tag and a building tag. And that energy tag is, is worth noting. Um, there are several cards that key off of the number of energy tags that you have, and they're, they're, they're pretty good. Um, so getting an energy tag on a card that also is decent is, is not bad. Um, if you think that a standard project uh, heat bump is, um, uh, I believe that's 13, right? Um, you know, basically you're paying three extra credits to get an energy boost as well, which is pretty good uh, along with the tags. I, I think this card's good. It also has utility in um, uh, if you're playing any sort of like corporation that that uses steel uh, this is a great way to convert steel into essentially credits uh to get a tr boost yeah 
Yeah, I do. I think this is a really good card. Um, some of the things you haven't mentioned yet are the tags. So, like, power tag, eh, situationally good, but there's a building tag on it. Um, so that helps you get into builder really well. And then, but yeah, like, this is it's just solid, man. Like, uh, energy production is so helpful in so many different ways, and you've been saying it all. So, like, yeah, I th- it's, there's, there's almost not much to talk about with this card because it's just really good. I think the point that you made right there, though, Nima, is that um, energy in, in the base game, energy production is at a premium, and I, I think that you're making that explicit. I think is is right on because I have gotten so much more aggressive about taking even marginal energy creation cards uh, because mm-hmm. they're so good to have them when you when you need it. You know, to, to play a, one of these cards that, you know, r- lowers your energy but has a lot of uh, production value. Yeah, totally. Um, so what are you thinking, man? What are you giving the deep well? Deep well. Um, I, th- I got to give this a, a B. I think it's a B. Yeah, I think it's I think it's also a – I think it's a B minus. Um, we've had this same discussion – before I think the impact is just a little low for it to for me to think of it as like you know just like a you know like one of the sort of best B cards or whatever but but I, I we're not far apart I, I think it's a very good card um, Highlander uh, mentions you know the fact that this is sort of a hybrid card that you get a TR boost as well as an energy production and a and a building tag and says like you know sometimes you know these cards that are efficient or a combination of several parts. You know, maybe you don't need one of those things. Like you already have a bunch of energy. That's completely true. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, like the thing is, it's not so expensive though, and such a huge effect that that it's that that is such a thing to worry about to me in this case. Like a heat production, one heat production. I think that's generally pretty good. Like I mean, it's. You know, it's going to increase your TR. It's going to get you more money in the long term. Um, so I think it's in this case, it's worth it to like hold on as your like power card. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I think uh, I think we're pretty close on that one. Okay, um, so B B minus. Are you ready for the next one, man? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Demos oh. down. Oh. Let's see. Let's see those. Uh, let's see those emojis, folks. All right. Let me tee this one up for you, Neva, because I know that you that you this is a, a pet card for you. Um, yeah. This is uh, Demos Down. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, it costs thirty-one mega credits. It is a space event. Um, it has some sick art on it, and uh, it raises your heat by three. It gives you four steel, and you get to hit eight plants. From another player and perhaps my favorite part of the card is the flavor text <laughs> yeah. we don't use that moon anyway <laughs> Nima, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nima, thoughts f you're coming in with an f f next card <laughs> uh this it, this is my favorite card in the game in case you haven't been watching the stream that long um yeah i it, it's just like so fun in every single way um, the three heat is great by itself, but it has the ad- added benefit of getting you the the bonuses on the heat track. This is the probably best way to get those those bonuses. Like it, you can you can be positioned at uh, at the bottom of the track in such a way that you can pull both of the heat bumps from the bottom of the heat track with one card. Um, you can get that. Uh, the, the ocean from this really easily too. And then, you know, add add the steel, add the huge amount of hate. Um, for 31, I, I mean, it feels like a steal to me. I don't know. Um, you know, it's a, it's a space card, so you can you can get discounts on it, but I'll, I'll throw it over to you, Nate. I mean, you, you basically said it all. I mean, this card's just amazing. Um... If you just do a little math, you start to get a sense of how under-costed this card is. So at, at each heat bump is 14. Uh, you know, you're talking 42 credits to get three bumps on the heat, right? Um, this is already under-costed in that respect. Yeah. Then you get eight back with steel. 
So yeah. you're, you're even less than that. You're basically getting heat bumps for half the price. This thing combos with so many other cards, optimal arrow breaking, uh, you know, other event card bonuses, things like that. Um, and you get to hit eight plants off of somebody. I yeah. mean, that that's that's basically like three points. You know, I mean, conservatively three, often four points. And you get all the effects that you talked about in terms of uh, tile, you know, getting these placement or the, the, the TR uh, bonuses. And I mean, Demos Down is just awesome. I mean, I, the only thing I would say is, the only thing I would say about this card is that if you're playing a game where you, you want it to go long, then... You know, playing yeah. cards like Demos Down, you're essentially racing the game to the to the end. And so I really like playing Demos Down when I find that I'm not the economy player in a round, in a game, but I do have some production and I'm sort of, you know, I'm trying to sort of end the game but quickly, but but rack up points and you know, it's like a very good value proposition play if you're if you're not the control player just to use some magic terminology, but you're kind of the mid-range player in the game. That's a good point. I mean, we should we should discuss that kind of stuff a bit more. Like, yes, this is an amazing card. Um, there are other things to discuss like that, too. In fact, Sid, Sid in the chat is bringing up it's a bit of a newbie trap because it's not really an, in, like, it's not an income generator, per se. Like, yes, you're going to get some, you get three TR out of it, and that in itself is income. But it's really expensive, so you might yeah, it would it would behoove you maybe to build up a little titanium first before playing this or find some other way to make it cheaper. Uh, basically, dump like blowing your whole wad all on this card may not be the best thing to do immediately. Nice analogy, by the way, uh, yeah, for our, for our family friendly stream. <laughs> um, I, I I definitely agree, and there are multiple comments here um, in the sidebar about how this can be a little bit of a trap. Um, however, I I think this is not the worst. Uh, it's not the worst early play if you don't have anything yeah. else going on. But I, I will I would say this: um, you, the you really want to hit plants with this card, right? I mean, right. Um, it's so value. so powerful. To, to identify who is winning the game and then just strip a bunch of plants from them. Like, um, it's just a very, very strong play. Um, and I think that's great. Also, you it, it's, this card really, really shines when you get the, the boosts on that TR tracker. So I do think of this as sort of a mid to late game card. Um, however, if you really have nothing in your hand in your opener and you're playing like Phobolog or something, I think it's completely fine to just throw demos down um you're getting a three mc production per turn um you know I, I don't know i think it's totally fine to do that yeah so like i i think i think the thing that makes this more a little more palatable as income is what you just said and also the steel you know so that that steel pays for itself back a little bit so it's not that bad of an early gameplay like you're saying yeah uh, though I do agree with the people in the sidebar that that this is this is better used when you can get the maximum value. Um, I think Demos Down is just a flat A. I, I think it's um, you know it's I, I, there are definitely a certain there's definitely cards that I think are are much better. You know I you know like the Earth Catapult kind of thing and all that. I mean, but I there it, this is just a very efficient card and it has a big impact on the game. I, it's an A to me. I think it's it's just very good. Yep, without a doubt, it's solid A. Really one of the one of the, one of the best cards in the game. Game breaking. You should rarely pass it. Okay. Ding. You ready for the next one? Yes, sir. Designed microorganisms. Man, it's just everything feels like a letdown after Demos Down, you know? Completely. <laughs> it's a Demos Letdown. Ah, uh, whoa. See man. what I did there? I, I do. Okay, so Design Microorganisms cost 16. Um, you have to play this before it reaches minus 14 Celsius. There is a science tag and a microbe tag. 
and it gives you two plan production. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, you know, design microorganisms are... I think this card, it, it looks good. Like, I, I look at this card and I'm like, hey, this card looks decent. You know, like, it's got a science tag. Uh, it's got a microbe tag. It's 16 credits for a two plant production, which is a little more than what you want to pay for it. But you do get that science tag. The problem is, like, I just never play this card. I, like, the problem is when you want to play this card early, you know, it's obviously better early because of the global requirement restriction and everything. You just want to spend that money on boosting your economy in other ways. You don't want to increase plant production early. And I we've talked about this before when we've reviewed some of the other cards. Um, boosting your plant production early is usually ineffective. That that you want to be boosting economy, and that weirdly it's the it's the economy player who often becomes the plant production player towards the mid to late game. Yeah. And I think that they just needed to way reduce the price on this card. You know, I think mm. that it needed to be like 10 or something like that, or maybe eight. Um, just really, really lower the price on this to make it palatable, but it's just way too expensive for for an early game card. I, I don't I don't know that I agree. I mean, like, so Mac 14C is, it's, it's kind of mid game, right? So, and two, like, okay, so we've said this many times in our videos, but plant production is is costed really high in terraforming mars because greenery is worth a lot of points you know you get the point for itself points next to a city and the oxygen bump itself so i'm not surprised by the cost of this card um i think it's actually okay if if you play it close to 14c like I agree, you don't want to play this early on. You're just gonna you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, I do think, however, this card is a little situational. Like you're probably paying a bit for the tags on it, and those tags might not be useful to you. They might. Um, but I think two plant production in mid game, if that's the way you're gonna go, is pretty dang good. That's assuming you've built up your economy before that. If you haven't, this is a terrible card to play. Yeah, it's tough for me. I just think that, like, um, you know, we and we've talked about this in some of our general strategy videos, but early plays are are so important because of the way that there's this sort of compounding interest component to this game. You know, like. If you play a, a, a credit producer on turn one, then it means that you're going to get dividends from that card every generation for the rest of the game, right? Yeah, right. And I think that, um, you know, 16 credits early in the game is just so many credits. Like, I mean, I, I just, like, like if, you, if you dump all your stuff into design microorganisms and then on turn like three someone demos downs your six plants yeah. like you're, you're just like what i i like you just want to like flip the table i like you're gonna get direct in that game so i don't know i i think i think this card is just too expensive i i i think it's a d i i just don't i hardly ever play this card um I'm giving it the solid D, Nima. The solid D from Nate. Hmm. I I think I'd go a little higher than this. Um, I might. I don't know, man. This is tricky. Like, I I do think this is a pretty situational card, so I go D plus. Um, I think I think two plants in mid game is quite good. Um, but that combined with the tags, um, makes it a little less good. So I, I'm going D plus. So you're giving it the solid D. Yes. Y yes, Nate. Yes, I am. Okay. All right. We're both giving it the solid D. It's like, uh, <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next one here. Um, all right. This next card development center. Uh, ah. 11 credits 
Uh, science tag and building tag, and you can spend an energy to draw a card once per generation. Yeah. Okay. Y yeah, I mean, it's, okay. This is pretty good. Um, have I you have ever seen? This, have you ever seen this card before, Nima? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I'm, I'm struggling. Like I'm figuring out in my head. Like I, I was, I was about to say, like. First, at first glance, I think this is a quite a good card. But okay, so you obviously you need a an energy production every turn to even enable it. So you know now we're talking this a uh, uh, fourteen cost card becomes like you know in the twenties, and it allows it lets you to just draw the card. However, which is really nice. I like the tags on it. Really nice tags. So yeah, I'm thinking this is a pretty good card. It's maybe, you know, um, it's maybe not the top tier of card draw um, cards in this game, just because of the way you you get to it. Uh, I think it's I think it's a decent card draw. What do you think? Oh, I think Development Center is awesome. I do you know, really? I do. I I think. You know, I, I think um, I I used to think these cards were sort of mediocre and situational, but uh, card draw has just impressed me more and more. And the card and and the science tag cards with a with a concurrent building tag are just awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Like like these are two just ridiculously highly relevant tags, and yeah. card draw is just insane. So. I, I think Development Center is just an awesome card. Um, all the stuff you said about it, it, it is just a little pricey. True. Uh, spending an energy is annoying at times, you know, just making sure that you have that energy to, to do. But um, I don't know, man. Development Center is just awesome. Those tags are so good. Um, I, I think Development Center is a B minus and maybe even just a flat B. Uh, I, I don't... I mean, I'm also, people understand my, my biases. Uh, I, I tend <laughs> to really, really like the science strategy and, you know, getting a science tag and a building tag and a card draw on a single card that also furthers, it, furthers your science engine is just awesome. Okay, well, well, engage a little bit with the, 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 the energy, like what the energy setup for this though. Like what do you, what do you think that does to this card? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean, it is worth noting that the science strategy dovetails well with energy, um, in the sense that once you get to four science tags, you you're starting to get the payoff for you know these science energy cards. There's a it's actually three science tags is kind of the cutoff, but there's a few cards that give you cheap energy in multiple different ways. So. For me, Development Center is sort of like a Gen 3 card. Like, you want to spend your early turns building your economy. And then on Gen 3 or 4, you start wanting to, you start wanting to play these value cards that let you draw more cards. And I think that in that context, you, you will have usually found a way to get some energy onto the board and you can make that happen. It's also worth noting the sequencing that you mm. want to you want to get your energy first and then and then play development center when you have an energy to spend there's no point there's no point in playing development center if you don't have the energy to spend on it so you can just hold development center in your hand until you have that cheaper energy card play it and on the following turn you drop the development center okay yeah i think i'm following okay so yeah, the, the, the payoff cards make this super nice. You know, if you get Quantum Extractor or um, Mask Inverter, like this is a no-brainer, right? But you, you probably, you would want this before you get those, though, is the thing. So the, the, one of the things I was thinking about with, with starting that conversation is you generally don't want to leave your power just laying around because it leaves it open to get sniped. So that that can that's a danger with playing this card, right? So if you you have one energy production and you're using that every turn to pop development center, 
it's a pretty attractive target, right? Um, for like a power consortium or something like that. Yeah, you definitely need to keep that in mind. Um, you're totally right on that, Nima. Um, you can play around those sorts of effects, right? I mean, you can make sure that you have a little buffer on your energy. And the reality is that you can generally assume that you're going to want some energy at some point in the game, which means that if you get an early, you know, space mirrors or something like that, or, or uh, what's the one, um, uh, the, the, the space card that gives you three energy production, whatever. There's a, there's a variety giant of mirror. Yeah. Giant space, giant space mirror. mirror. There's a variety of cards that let you boost your energy and you can play those cards um, that that over boost your energy production and it's it's not wasted because you're almost yeah. certainly going to have an opportunity to use that energy either to play a city uh, or to do something else with it. So I, I'm you can you, you your point is well taken and it is devastating if you have one energy production and someone hits you with energy tapping or something, but you can play around that. Um, you can also play around that by sequencing your turn such that you, you know, you don't, you, you let them pass before you play the card or whatever. It, sure, sure. Oh, you know, subsequent generations, you have to deal with it though. Um, I think I, I think I give this card a C. I think it, you know, it's the card draws really good. I think it's a little too hard to set up, and I think it's a, it's a little too punishable. Well, well, Nima, I hope I'm sitting next to you in the draft. Oh, dude. <laughs> but what did you give it? I gave it a B, B minus, somewhere in that range. But um, I think it's quite good. Interesting. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't go that high with this. All yeah. right, man. Next card here, domed crater. Okay. Dude, you love getting your domed crater. Uh, this, <laughs> this card, this card costs 24 credits. It, uh, can only be played if the oxygen is less than 7%. It gives you a city tag and a building tag. Uh, you get three plants when you play this card. You get to play a city tile. You reduce your energy by one. You boost your economy by three and you get a card. Um... I'm sorry, a point, no, not it. a card. Okay. You get a point. I apologize. Um, Nima, there's a lot going on with this card. What do you think, man? Yeah, I don't really like this card very much. Um, so, well, let's see here. 7% oxygen maximum. That's That still leaves this as a mid to late game card. So that's, that's okay. Um, I don't... The the three plants I don't like very much. Um, you don't like plants? Well, it's just... It makes it feel situational once again. So, like, if I'm not going for plants, what that's nothing. That does nothing for me, right? It's just plants for someone to nuke. And, you know, the, the, the power in the Mega Credits, that's, that's standard for, like, every city. And, and the, the point is pretty standard, too. It's, and it... Like, this does feel a little on the expensive side, and yeah, Sid's saying that too. It feels on the expensive side for a city, city card, I should say. So, uh, yeah, I'm not too big into this card. I, maybe if I was like Eco Line, I think this would be good, but otherwise, meh. What do you think? Yeah, I think, okay, I mean, I think you said most, most of what needs to be said about this card. Um, if you just imagine for a minute that a standard project city costs you 25, um, so this is a, a little more expensive than a standard project city, assuming that you're going to uh, buy the card. Um, it does have a point on it, and we generally value a point at about six to eight meta credit, mega credits, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And you get three plants. Um, it costs an energy, unlike a standard project, but you get a boost of three to your economy. And you get a steel tag. So I think I think this card's good. Um, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's great. It's definitely a little too expensive. Um, I think it's a good steel sink if you have some steel production and you want to get a city down. It's great if you're going for mayor and you just you want to get a little extra value rather than just paying for a standard project. Um, but I think that its base cost is high enough that you're never you're never considering this to be 
a great deal. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I for me this is sort of like a classic C. Um, there are there are situations where it's it's much better, um, but you know I, I I think the problem is that in general spending a lot of money on cities is not a great value proposition. So even though that this is, is a good city and that you get a point with it and you get some plants and other stuff. This sort of effect is not, in my opinion, super powerful. So even though this is right. a, good, a good version of it, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's a little underwhelming. Yeah, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. So yeah, I, I'm with you there. Like this, to, to go back to our grading scale, I think this is like just a little bit better than a standard project. Um, I mean, and I, it, it clearly is, but like there's much better city cards. So I'm, I'm giving this a C as well. You know, KG Highlander make, uh, has a very good point, which is like these cards that cost more than 20 are really good in credit core and sure. dome crater is awesome in credit core. Like that four credit difference does make a difference. Uh, that's a, that's a great point. Um, we have some very interesting uh, side discussions about the city. This seems to be a little controversial. Um, you know, there, so I don't know if you you know check out the sidebar comments here on this one. Um, I think they add some some interesting uh, points. Yeah, add to it in the comments afterwards too. I mean, yeah, it, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, I think I'm sticking with a C. Um, all right, for once you and I are in agreement. Yeah, how about it? Um, all right, you're finally right. You're finally right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Next card, Nima. Dust yes, seals. Um, so this huh. card costs two mega credits. You can only play it if there are three or fewer oceans. It gives you a point. That's all it does. Um, and the flavor text: tight <laughs> seals to keep micron-sized dust out of buildings, vehicles, and suits. And as a as an actual engineer, that is very important stuff. <laughs> you really want some good O rings and what do you think about and... what do you think about tight seals? I'm a big fan of tight dust seals, seals, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also a fan of dust seals. But tight <laughs> seals are good, man. Dust uh, seals. This is I don't know. Like it's fine. Like two 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 well five credits for a point. Yeah, it's good. that seems like a on the low end for a point so it's uh, this is definitely a card i would want to use get get out of a card draw card instead of buying it i think that's when it's really good i don't yeah so i don't, I don't know that i would like get this out of a, a a pack in the draft there's a lot of other cards i'd take over it I think that's yeah. There's not much more to say. <laughs> I like thinking. I like comparing this card to CEO's favorite project. So we talked about that on the last episode. I think CEO's favorite project is quite good. You know, it costs you one credit, uh, three if you buy it, three additional if you buy it, and essentially it just gives you a point because you get to put that that resource on another card. Dust seals is very similar to that. The problem is you don't want to spend the money early in the game. You want that effect at the end of the game, right? You want to play Dust Seals in Gen 8 when you just got a few credits lying around. You don't want to play it on turn one when you really want to spend every bit of your mega credits on economy. So I think that Dust Seals, you know, just on its face is fine. You know, like two credits for a point or particularly if you draw it, that seems good. The problem is the the window that you have to play this card is so narrow that it just in my in my experience I almost never play it, um, you know. So I think it's functionally a D for me. Whereas with uh, CEO's favorite project, I think I think you argued for B minus on that card just because it was so cheap, and um, I think I gave CEO a C plus. But anyway, I think that CEO's project is so much better than Dust Seals. Yeah, that's it's a really good point, and um, I noticed Sid mentioned it as well. Like, yeah, th- three oceans go really quick in terraforming, uh, at least the at least the games we play. So yeah, this is basically like you're playing this Gen one or Gen two, and that's it. And like you said, there's much better ways to use your money. So yeah, um, 
I mean, you you use the words almost never played, which is a definition, our definition of F. Yeah. Yep. Is it well? Yeah. I mean, I can't give it a straight F because in the card on its face is not bad. I mean, it, it's not a bad ratio of credits to points. It's just that, you know, the like I said, the the window of opportunity to play it is just very narrow. So in the situation where you have this card or you drew it and you can play it, I'm going to play it every time. Right. You know, so I don't yeah. think it's an F. It's just that you just it just almost never lines up that way and I would never prioritize this card. Yeah, I I agree with you there. If you can if you can get this card for free off of a card draw, then you should play it. But otherwise, hell no. So yeah, I'm I'm going D with this one as well. All right, man. Uh, we got a big one here coming up. Ooh, what is it? What is it? Earth Catapult. Ooh, baby. Yeah. This 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 should be fun. Um, Earth Catapult costs 23. It has an Earth tag. And after you play it, every card you play subsequent to that it costs two less. And on top of that, it has two points on it. Take it away, Nate. Yeah, well, you can see you can see the comments in the uh, in the sidebar here. People are, are going crazy over Earth Catapult, and I mean, I have to agree. Earth Catapult is is just awesome. I mean, I think when I first started playing this game, um, I just I I thought it was like a little overcosted, or I, I didn't. I don't think I immediately saw the impact of this card, uh, which is really a testament to. Uh, <laughs> Your my, my poor my poor uh, card evaluation skills but having played this card i mean this is a card that you just have to you have to play it to really understand how ridiculously dominant it can be i mean the card is just relentless if you play this in in the first couple generations those two credits off of every card, they just add up so much. And they take a lot of marginal value cards and they make them efficient. You know, so like we were talking about Domed Crater at 24 and, and we mentioned that, you know, with a cost reduction to 20, it was quite a bit better. You know, like yeah. think about, you know, and, and the reality is that Earth Catapult works best on low cost cards because... Right. It's the card the, the reduction in the credit cost for a card is a larger proportion of a lower card cost card. And so you can get into these situations where you have this this sort of velocity of card play where if you are drawing tons of cards and you're getting lots of cheap cards, you know, you're playing Dust Seals for free, you're playing CEO's favorite project for free, you're playing you know, energy tapping for one, you're, you know, you're playing Earth Office for free. I mean, like you start to get all of these just free cards out of your hand and, and it's just, uh, it, this card's just ri ridiculous. I, I mean, even playing it in Gen 5, you're going to get huge value out of it. And, and the reality with Earth Catapult is that it tends to snowball because once you start having these cost reduction, you can play more marginal cards for value that let you open up other combo cards, you know? And so my experience with Earth Catapult is that once you have this piece, um, suddenly it's easier to get the science strategy going and you start getting those cost reductions. And you, you know, it's just like, I mean, this card just turns into this giant snowball. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I echo all that. Just to take a little bit of analysis further, so you have to play twelve cards for this to pay itself off. Um, and that's but you not get two credits on it, or two points. I'm sorry, you get two points on the card. Correct, correct, and that's big. Um, but, but that you know, it, this isn't a cheap card to play, and yes, it's totally worth it, and it will pay itself off. But it will take a while. Um, if you can, if you can. Um, get some earth tag combos going with it, then that makes this all the better, right? If you're Teractor, or you don't have to be Teractor, but you know, you get some cards that make earth tags better, and this is just like even better, right? So yeah, man, I mean, two points too, like that's, that's worth like 15 credits right there, right? Or something like that, 10 to 15. Um, 
Yeah. So when you when you think about it that way, it, it pays itself off much quicker. So there's some. Yeah, they, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nima. No, that 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 was kind of. There's some good. comments in the sidebar about how to play Earth Catapult, and this card, it really does impact the game. If somebody plays Earth Catapult early, like they are public enemy number one. Every single hate card is from from me is going to hit them. I'm going to do everything I can to cut cards from them in the draft. Like you really do put a target on your back with Earth Catapult in the same way that you do when you play an early, an early Jovian multiplier. Mm -hmm. The thing about Earth Catapult, and I, and I totally agree with the comments in the sidebar, is that often you're going to want to play your basic economy cards first in Gens 1 and 2 and just rack up cards, you know. So you're going to play your cheap um, – your cheap – uh, uh, economy cards and stuff like that. Yeah, you are taking a little bit of a hit because you haven't played the Catapult first, but you play those cheap economy cards, you buy a bunch of cards in your draft, you especially look for card draw because, again, the Catapult is so good when you're seeing a lot of cards for free because you're going to draw all of these marginal cards that you wouldn't normally want to play, but the, the cost reduction starts to move them into the territory where they're good. So anything with card draw, you, you want to get those. Like often the way I play Earth Catapult is I go for planner and then dump the catapult on Gen 4 or 5 and then just like just dump everything you have. So I, I mean there's definitely a way to unlock the full potential of Earth Catapult, but you just have to trust us on this one. This is an A++. If, if you haven't – if you're uh, new to the game and you haven't played with Earth Catapult – Give it a try. It is super fun, and you, you will see how big an impact it has on the game. Yeah, totally agree. Um, you did, you know, your little side combo there was interesting, though. Like, there's, is is it always worth to play this card Gen 1? Sounds like no, right? Um, there are situations where you don't want to. You, you paint the target on your back. You know, there, you might not have, you, you might hit your tempo too hard because you're not building your economy. Um, so, you know, this is, this is one of the best cards in the game, but it's not, you do need to be mildly careful with it. Yeah. Um, and how you play this card largely depends on what corporation you are. If you're playing credit core, I mean, this card is just ridiculous, oh, yeah. right? I mean, oh so if you're playing credit core, you start with such high cash, you're just going to dump the catapult on turn one. There's, there's really no reason not to, if you're playing mining guild, um, you're going to, you're not going to play this on turn one because that's going to nerf you for like s several generations, you know? So a lot of the, a lot of how you play Earth Catapult depends on the corporation. But I mean, no matter how you stack it, this card's just r ridiculously good and you never want to pass this card. I, I mean, even if, even if it's some weird scenario where you you don't want to play it yourself, do not pass Earth Catapult. Um... I guess the question is like if Earth Catapult and AI Central are in the same draft, which one do you take? Mm. I mean, that's happened think, to me before. Oh man, I, yeah, I think I think it depends. I think it depends on what you need. Like if you've already played a lot of cards down, I think you d you definitely go AI. If 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 you're short on cards. Well, no, that's what I just said. But if, if you've got plenty of cards that you want to get out, then Earth Catapult's the way to go. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, I think that, um, you know, it, it, it obviously is very situational. It just depends on what's going on in the game. Um, they're both... The, I think Earth Catapult and AI Central, to me, are the best cards in the game. Uh, that That's a tough pick, having to, having to choose between those. I am partial to AI just because I like drawing cards so much, but Earth Catapult is just it's just a house. Um, yeah, yeah, Earth Catapult it's it's one it's it's like kind of unsexy in a way because it's just passively working right, and you're not like activating it and doing cool stuff like AI Central. Just feels so good to activate. It does. Right? It's just like every turn you're like, <laughs> boop. Yep. Just draw one. Cards. That's right. Draw one. Look at my card. <laughs> it's so exactly. fun. So, um, it's definitely less fun, but man, it's a good card. All right, A plus from both of us. Okay. What's next? All right, next. Um, you probably can predict it. It is Earth Office. Yep. Uh, so Earth Office, it's a one mega credit. It has an Earth tag, and basically it allows all of your Earth tag cards to be played for three mega credits fewer. 
So yeah, play this, then play Earth Catapults. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> That's <laughs> that is what you want, friends. Um, g- good card, man. I think it's uh, you know we have often said there's not a lot there. You know, Earth tags are underrepresented in the base game. And that's certainly true. But there's enough of them that this it makes this card pretty good. Um, not great, mind you, but it's so cheap that it, it'll it's likely to pay itself off. Yeah, this card's great. I mean, basically, if you have a single other Earth card in your hand, um, it's just it's already basically paid for itself. The opportunity cost on this card is just super low, and sometimes it can just get you ten or twelve credits. I mean, I think. Uh, Earth Office for me is just a solid B. Right. So, and, and I just looked it up. There's um, in the base game, there's 22 Earth tags. Yeah. So that's not bad. And there's and this. and it's worth saying that many of the Earth tags are quite good. I mean, you're talking about Media yeah. Group, Earth Catapult, the Olympus Conference, uh, you know, Immigration Shuttles. I mean, there's there's just a lot of good Earth tags. Large out there. Convoy. Convoy. Yeah, that's right. Immigration. Yeah, you said that one. Um, yeah, totally. So yeah, this is a really good card. Um, I let's see. I don't think it's game breaking by any means. I think we're talking B here. Um, yeah, I I don't I don't know if I'd give it straight B. Hmm. I think I'm thinking B minus here. I'm just gonna give it a straight B. I think this card's quite good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the, would... the thing is, it costs you almost nothing because because you're you're gonna you're so likely to play at least one Earth tag in the game. Like you're you're just gonna take this, and then you've spent one credit. I, I mean, it, it's just the opportunity cost is just so low on this, and the ceiling is 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 pretty high. Well, or or, or four credits, right? So like this, it would take at at worst, it would take two Earth tags to pay itself off. Right, but what I'm saying is that once once you've bought this card and played it, you're in four credits. If you play one other Earth Earth tag, you're at, you're you've invested one credit in the card. I right. mean, it's you know, I just think it's a good it's a good deal. Um, it's just very yeah. a, a very efficient card. I mean, it's it it doesn't it's not game breaking, but um, but it's it's just really good. There you go, bees. All right, here we go. Next one. Are you ready? Yeah. Ecological zone. Oh, okay. That, that, I'm. This is this is good. I'm glad we're going to talk about this one. Honestly, like, I'm more interested to hear about this one because I, I don't. I'm not super familiar with this card to be honest. But here we go. So, cost twelve. Uh, requires that you have a greenery played. Uh, there's a animal and a plant tag on it. And then there's it's a blue card so. The, the effect is when you play an animal or a plant tag, including the the two on the card, add an animal to this card. Um, it also has a tile that you're able to place adjacent to any greenery tile, hence the requirement. And then for every two animals on the card, you get a point. So yeah, what, what do you think about this, Nate? One, I'm curious about this one, Nate. I'm curious. Yeah, Eco Zone is awesome. I, you know, I, I really, really under-respected Ecological Zone, Viral Enhancers. Um, when I first started playing the game, I, I really was, and you'll, you'll, if you've watched some of our other gameplay videos, you can see this evolution in, in my game in particular, that early on I, I was more into terraforming and sort of quick, quick games and trying to end them. Um, and over the last, say, third of the games that are posted, you can see that that I really, when the opportunity arises to get the viral enhancers combo going with these plant tags and animals, um, I will often go for that. And you can just score massive amounts of points with them. The thing about Ecological Zone is that it has a point on it. You basically get a point right off the bat from yeah. playing this card and a tile. So paying you know 15 credits for a tile and a point already is like eh, it's like not amazing but it's okay i mean you're gonna get some bonuses back with the tile usually you're gonna get some money back if you play it near oceans you can mess up someone's grid uh you can get some steel or something like that a card maybe so on its face it's not bad but when you start to see the synergy potential with this card with other cards it can just get it can get just get crazy i mean 
if you have eco zone down and decomposers which is another card that we played and you and you have viral enhancers or something you start playing these animal cards like you just rack up so many points i i've there are so many examples of games that we've posted onto this channel where viral enhancers single-handedly won us the game where where you look at like eco zone and fish and birds and livestock and we've got like 12 points on it or 14 points you know <laughs> and and it's like basically the difference in the game um i eco zone is is just a great great engine card and um i, I have a lot of respect for it and you, you definitely want to think twice about passing this card e even if it's not great for you um often you're going to want to cut this card rather than pass it to somebody that might be able to assemble those co combos I think EcoZone is a B plus. Um, Whoa! Yeah, I think it's it's that good. I think it's quite good. Wow. Um, I mean, I, I was somewhere in the C's, man. Like, so, and then the reason for that is, like, yes, I mean, this can be amazing if you have the right setup, but it's it's a fairly big if. Um, it's not like super easy or common to get the setup you're talking about. And this card by itself, um, the, the greenery requirement makes it hard to play. So I don't, I don't think it's as good as that. I think when it's good, it's amazing, but it's not often good. So that's kind of why I'm like C plus territory here. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're just undervaluing this card. I mean, I'm going to push back on you a little bit here. I mean, it, it's just this card scores points. It score it scores more points than you think. The other sort of incidental value on it is that um, it gives you a plant and an animal tag at the same time, which is great. I mean, it's just good to have those. It works with uh, some of the other combos that we talked about. Yeah, and it gives you a, an off ramp for cards that let you make animals. And there's a bunch of cards that let you make animals. And obviously, you would prefer to put those on on the one-to-one -one point scoring ratio cards, but in a pinch, this will do just fine and you get your value. Um, EcoZone, I, I just think you're underrating it. I, I think that when I play EcoZone, I would say the average is that I score four points on it. Um, and and I've had games where I've scored more than that. So if you're spending you know, 15 credits, and again, remember, you're getting a tile, so you're not gonna spend 15 credits. You're often gonna get four credits back you know, putting this next to some oceans, um, you know, you're, you're spending, let's say you're spending on average 11 or 12 credits to get four points. I mean, it's like, it's like a little mini milestone. The card is just, it's very good. Okay. But like, so to further my point, like how often do you play this card when you draw it? That's a good question. Um, you are correct that there are many times that I play this that I that I will see this card and I don't play it. However, I think the reason that it gets up into B territory is that I'm quite reluctant to pass it even if I don't want to play it. And that's the mark of a card that is a B for me. Um, you know, if if somebody is is kind of getting their little engine set up and stuff like I'm not passing them eco zone, man. They're going to score like 6 points off it. Like that's just it's it's just too efficient. Mm. I mean, what if, like, you know, if this, like I said before, it's not an easy card to get down. So, like, if they're, I, I suppose having a greener is not the hardest thing in the world. But having it, you know, it requires a greenery and then 12 credits on top of that. Yeah, it's, it's not cheap. So, I don't know. Like, I, I started this conversation by saying I don't know this card very well. So, I'm more going to defer to you on this one. So, I, I will... I will go along with what you're saying. Like, it doesn't seem as good to me. Like, I still think it's good, but I think it's it feels situational to me, and that may, that brings its stock down for me. But, okay. I hear you. I, 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 you know, I feel like you are where I was with this card, you know, a while ago in my evolution. You know, like, I, I just think that I've seen this card have such an impact on the game that sure. that the results that I've seen from it have changed my opinion and and i am colored you know my opinion is colored by the fact that i am a huge fan of viral enhancers and this card is just ridiculous with viral enhancers so sure um but you are right i mean it, it is it is essentially it's an engine slash combo card 
Um, it's not amazing on its own, though it's fine on its own, but it's not amazing. Um, and the card definitely is is more valuable when you are pushing into a specific strategy that that employs it. So I can see what you're saying. I just for me it's a B plus. Um, there are a few cards in the game that that have such a big impact if left on the board, and you know. But I, I can see where you're coming. I can see why you're skeptical. Okay. Fair enough. All right, then. I think we discussed that one. So B plus from you, C plus from me, but take mine with a grain of salt. So uh, uh, Nima, that's one more, or is that it? I think that's it for today, man. I think that was that was a solid uh, solid hour of card evaluations. Everything's solid, man. We got Dude. a solid hour, solid D's. <laughs> yeah, solid dust seals. You know, I mean, we're just. <laughs> Solid seals, yeah. Really good seals. Going maybe on. maybe I need to make you an emoji with the solid D. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and anything but a visual representation. I I have several um, things in mind already, Nima. If you if you want to, you know. <laughs> I, I really don't want to know what you have in mind. Um. Well, I'll I'll take it offline. You know, this is a family friend, friendly stream. <laughs> in theory people are yeah, calling um, people are calling for an encore but we're trying to keep these videos at about an hour so um I i'm sorry to disappoint you um however um we could do a second well, well let's finish this one up nima you want to do the like a little uh, sign off sure thing? so yeah thanks for watching guys we really appreciate it hope you dug it uh f let us know what your ratings are uh, we'd love to hear that stuff and hear you debate about it uh, give us a follow on Twitch and YouTube, Cardboard from Mars. Follow us on Twitter at Cardboard Mars. Um, and yeah, thanks again. We'll see you next time uh, we do one of these videos. Yeah, and maybe maybe Nemo will start posting these videos so that you guys can check them out. It's, <laughs> it's definitely possible. I keep thinking it's going to happen, um, you know. But uh, you know, we'll take it from there. Uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.